more often than not, I'm noticing paranormal investigators dabble in dark magic practices and messing with Ouija boards while doing investigations. Now, most of the time, they are unexperienced and have no idea what they are doing and what the ramifications are for what they have done. So in this video, I will be talking about that and some potential risks that they may come into contact with. <laughs> partakes in any type of dark magic, whether that's, you know, dark spell work, ritual work, things that yield a negative reaction or an output of negative energy, there are a bunch of risks that come into play. Now, quick disclaimer. I understand there are experienced dark magic practitioners who do not experience anything negative from their craft and I'm not referring to them because many of them understand the ramifications of their actions and know not to do some of the things that some of these paranormal investigators do for views. In this video I am specifically speaking to those who have no inkling about the type of magic and its laws that they are fooling around with. So when I see paranormal investigators dabble in dark magic practices for fun when they have no experience. It's super frustrating because they have no idea what they just did, what it caused, and all the side effects. Same thing with Ouija boards because Ouija boards can do similar things. So first and foremost, they are risking their own safety. When doing anything related to dark magic or Ouija boards, they run the risk of creating attachments, causing illnesses, bad luck, etc., through the production of negative energies, spirits, and or entities. When a person doesn't know what they are doing, they can accidentally create energetic cords with whatever they are in communication with. This is one great way to create a negative attachment. In addition, they can create negative energy byproducts. So, you know, negative residual energy after something negative was done. And they can accidentally or purposely attract negative spirits and entities. Their actions can negatively affect others, both the living and the dead. Depending what is done, there's the risk that others can pick up a negative attachment through what was created or brought there and can also suffer health issues and bad luck. It can make the original paranormal activity worse, making it unbearable for the property owners or for those who live nearby. Because spirits don't just stick around in one space all the time. They move. And if they need negative energy to feed off of, well, they're going to have to go somewhere to get it. There's the possibility that whatever is released, created, or brought there can disrupt the balance in the area. Portals can be created, altering the energetic balance, or can make the area a paranormal hotspot. If a negative or evil entity is brought to a haunted location, there's also the risk that it attacks, feeds, traps, tortures, enslaves, etc the other spirits in the vicinity. It's actually very cruel, in my opinion, to do these rituals and not know what you're doing because you're not just affecting the living, you're affecting the dead and whatever other spirits are in the vicinity. People aren't the only ones that can be affected from negative spirits and entities. Animals can be as well, living or dead or in spirit form. 
and what they do to people, they can do to animals. Now for the Ouija board section of the video. So if you don't know how a Ouija board works, essentially, when you use one, you're pretty much creating a doorway for other entities and spirits to come through. And then when you do your you're putting out that radio signal, the things that do come through are going to be things that match the energetic vibration of the people or person doing the Ouija, but also the area in which it's done in. And that radio signal is at that low frequency because again, it's gotta match the frequency that's being put out because most people are stuck in the 3D concept of Earth, they're going to resonate at that vibratory state, which means, again, you're going to attract things at that same vibratory state, which is pretty low because Earth in of itself is one of the lower vibratory levels, so you're going to attract similar things. And if you're somebody dealing with traumas, which I feel like most of us are, that even puts you lower on the spectrum. And then you're going to get something even lower. So that's why uh, oftentimes you're going to get some negative things. And once, you know, the entity or spirit comes through, then they're going to start using the people involved as a battery pack and because of this it's already creating cords to those people and so you could either leave with the attachment and or leave that entity there to haunt that space but I would say a lot of times I mean it can be both it doesn't have to be one or the other. But seeing as how a lot of these negative entities, and by a lot, I mean, I would say most of them, attach to people's traumas, it's, it's harder for a person to get rid of an attachment when it's attached to traumas. So more often than not, the entity is just going to attach to the person anyway. So, I mean, why put yourself through that? It's not fun and games. Sure, in the short term, it might be cool for views, but what are you losing in return? Like, there's nothing positive that you will be getting in return. So why put yourself through that? Why? Why? I don't get it. Is it because people just don't know how Ouija boards work? Because essentially... You don't need, if you're trying to communicate with a loved one, you don't need to use a Ouija board to do it. You can do it telepathically and they can hear you. So, I mean, yeah. Just save yourself the trouble. If you want to communicate with spirits and shit, um, I mean, you can still use a spirit box. You can use the REM pods. You don't need the Ouija board. You don't need to do rituals. Like, there are other effective ways to communicate with spirits without disturbing or making the area uh, more negative or just worse in general. But when I say Earth is more on a lower vibratory scale, I'm, I'm talking about, like, humanity as a whole it's it's not doing too great <laughs> humans are in the middle because we are like on the neutral end of the scale and earth obviously you know is neutral 3d okay so the 3d world 3d concepts materialism that's when you start moving down the scale and when you are less balanced and more in tune with the physical and materialism and all that stuff that's how you start moving down the frequency scale 
Now, if you do the opposite and, you know, you focus more on love, higher vibratory things, that's when you move up in frequency, right? So you can up and down. So depending on the state in which the person is in, a lot of us have traumas, a lot of us have learned behaviors from our environment, from, you know, our parents. It's like nature versus nurture that has its, it takes its toll on us. And again, it can either put us down or up. But yeah, most people kind of fall around here. So the frequency of this planet of humans is more on the lower end of the scale because like I said, people are more focused on materialism, on 3D aspects instead of the higher vibratory things like love, which is why, okay, it puts us at the lower end of the stick or the chart. <laughs> So, if you want to learn more about the whole frequency thing and all the dimensions and stuff, I highly recommend listening to the Lights of Midnight podcast episode called Frequency Duality. I forget. I'll put it in a card. But, dude, it is a long-ass episode of reading rainbow science moments. You might not want to miss it. It's one of our best performing episodes, actually because of the Reading Rainbow breakthroughs that we had from channeling. So I highly recommend listening to that episode. Overall, playing with things you don't understand, such as magic, whether it's dark or not, is simply a bad idea. And when you add dark magic or anything that can yield a negative effect, that's when things get really dangerous. So a word to the wise, don't do it. Just don't. Save yourself the trouble, save other people the trouble, save the, you know, harmless and innocent spirits the trouble. Just don't do it, please. Okay, thanks. Anyway, thank you for showing up to my TED Talk. <laughs> and yeah, but I mean, unless I miss something, guys, let me know down below. It's not cool to be doing these things for views because it's not just yourself that you're affecting, you're affecting other beings, other people, animals, anything around you. So yeah, just don't do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace out. Spear fingers. <laughs> That's my new thing now. Spear fingers. If you like this type of content, I highly recommend watching the video I did called Psychic Medium Reacts to Robert the Doll and Exploring with Josh, where Josh does something I tell you not to do in this video that you just watched.